business you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for the weekly Daily Gizwiz is provided by the new Winamp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one-click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full-length CD listening parties. Download it for free at winamp.com slash android. Video bandwidth for the weekly Daily Gizwiz is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. It's time for the Weekly Daily Gizwiz with Matt's maddest writer, Dick T. Bartolo. This is episode 1360, recorded April 7th, 2012. The Weekly Daily Gizwiz is brought to you by Vast Conference, the ultimate in professionalism, clarity, and flexibility for your conference calls, all at a low price. For two Vast Conference calls free with no commitment, go to vastconference.com and use the offer code GIZWIZ. And by Ford, featuring voice-activated Sync App Link. Now you can control select smartphone apps with your voice, helping you keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Learn more about the technologies Ford is bringing to its vehicles at Ford.com slash technology. And now, get ready for Dick. Ladies and gentlemen, do not attempt to adjust your sets. It's going to look this bad for quite some time. The Wow. Wow. I've just learned something, Dick. Yes? Do not bounce with soup in your hands. <laughs> There's soup everywhere. Hello, Dick really? D. Bartolo. Soup for everybody. Soup for everyone. Our entire studio <laughs> audience is getting soup under their chair today. So, uh, hello, Dickie D. Leo, how are you doing? I am fine, thank you. Are you uh, gearing up for the mayonnaise and partridge parade? Yes, the mayonnaise and partridge parade is coming to Petaluma once again. Uh, Dick is has one of these days we're going to get Dick out for this butter and eggs yeah, day. Only if you get like a sheriff's car that like we can ride around. <laughs> that would be in. fun. No, you could ride in the Mustang. It's a oh, hard top, right. but we'll just cut a hole in it. It'll be fine. Uh, this is uh, it's coming April. Well, now this is confusing. The opening yeah. ceremonies are Saturday, April 21st. The parade yeah. is Saturday, April 28th. And the fair wow, is... that's a long ceremony. <laughs> Apparently, it's a long ceremony. The, par- the parade is a week later. Well, I guess you uh, want to come on the 28th, cause, and the 29th is the antique fair. That's when we'll oh. put you in a car, ride you down the street. Nice. Yeah. Uh, are they in antique cars or antiques, like, from the attic? They're antiques or from the attic, anything. actually. But they do have... Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have, and I think it's next month, uh, we have American Graffiti Days. Because, oh, because of the mo- shot, shooting the movie there? The movie was shot here. They reenact a, a pivotal scene in the movie. Remember the scene uh, where in the middle of the night, the kids climb, you know, crawl up behind the cop car and they hook uh, uh, hooks, chains its axle. And then the, the, somebody speeds by, and the, and the car pulls out and pulls out its wheels. Remember that scene? It was like 2 in the yes, morning. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that yeah. was shot in Petaluma. In fact, <laughs> just tells you something. That lot, still a vacant lot. So, <laughs> so they, <laughs> they put a big sign up. Uh, that, that said, I think it was a used, supposed to be a used car lot. So they put a big sign up that says, you know, Al's used cars. And, and they do it at 2 in the morning. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. They redo a whole reenactment with an old highway patrol car and everything. So it's kind of fun. Maybe that's what goes on uh, April 22nd through 27th. I don't know. But the well, parade that town is, the, is just famous oh, for everything. We and know how to party. Twit. Yeah. And you now do. Twit. That, that's a party town. Two days a year, that is a party town. Twit is becoming well known. The mayor stopped by, uh, Petaluma stopped by the other day and asked for a job. So I think that that's right. a, okay. I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's actually not a joke. Uh, so we are we're becoming well known. We are. But uh, are you okay out there? What happened? 
All right. Liz had a little problem out there. It's all, it's all going to be okay. I have, by the way, I don't know if you noticed in previous episodes of this show, we, we had some sort of rattle coming from uh, the lighting uh, grid up here. So yes. uh, I think you'll find a, a very much different, quieter show today. Oh, you Listen. know it does sound quieter. Yeah, you yeah. know why? I put an ang- I stuffed you an know, angry I find bird. When up that there. happens, it, it sounds ridiculous. I usually take an angry bird stuffed <laughs> toy. I know, I know, I knew you'd laugh. It's, exact, but it, it, it's exactly. It's ex- it, but it, if if an angry bird happens to fall <laughs> through the picture, that's where it. <laughs> oh, okay. That okay. really is what happened. Yeah. So far, so good. Yeah, the good. angry pigs—they're good for electrical shorts, but <laughs> yeah. for fan I noise, got one. Angry bird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, save them. You may need it. You never know. I've got the angry pig here, ready. Good. Good. Okay. Ready to go in case of an electrical short. I'll put it just right there. So, how has your week been? Uh, my week was good. I went to the International Auto Show. Ah, where was that? Uh, at the Javits Center. Actually, it's still going on. I saw the Taxi of Tomorrow. Ooh, what's that? Although, like? I don't know why they call it the Taxi of Tomorrow because it's coming out next year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the Taxi of Tomorrow is, I think, Nissan's building them. Um, and they're, you know, it finally makes sense. The back seat, no hump. So the passengers have a lot of room. I don't know. Uh, I like humping in my back seat, but that's Oh, do you really? Yeah. Okay. Well that that's why you had to leave the past two <laughs> towns where you used to live. Uh and you know, sliding doors, USB charger in there, fifteen inch monitor. The monitor so you know you can see where you're going and bring up maps. Um it, it's pretty neat. And also it, it's more like a van. So the back of the uh the taxi will have two opening doors so if you have luggage or anything oh, so that's good, know, that's how they got the humps out yeah exactly There's plenty of yeah, space now you, have, you have to do it in the, in right. the uh, back right so uh, no it's very good and they're coming along uh next year I but i wait. found something there although i have to say i admit i miss the classic checker cab oh weren't who? those great with the, with the jump seats in the, in the yeah. so you had, and they were so spacious. You could it was probably like a dance floor in the back there. You could stand were, up and dance. It was huge. They were enormous, and it, and, and the company that built them was the Checker Company, and that's their only product was the Checker cabs. Are they gone? And Is the Checker Company gone? You know what? They were they were they were down to like three of them, but that was like three years ago. So uh, as we chat, I'm, so, <clears throat> I'm sure uh, someone in the chat room can do a little research. Well, it's on Wikipedia. It's on Wikipedia. A, Checker a Motors. Checker cab left. Yeah, the Checker Motors Corporation was I a Kalamazoo-based vehicle manufacturer. Did they go out of business? Uh, they were established by Morris Market in 1922. Wow. Through a merger of Commonwealth Motors and Markin Automobile Body. The final models were produced in 1982. I remember people used to be able to buy checkers, you know, like to drive. Yeah. Yeah, in 2009, yeah. they went Chapter 11. Oh, that's kind of oh, sad. Thought, those yeah. were those were great yeah. automobiles. Huge amount of space. You could get in there with your luggage. You didn't need a trunk. It was a, it was a, just a classic look. And everybody who, yep. you know, you may not know checker, you may not know the name, but if you see a classic checker cab, you'll immediately recognize uh, it's yeah, funny they never much. made passenger vehicles. That was just it. Just for New yeah, York City all they cabs. Did was cabs. Yep, and there were uh, room for three in the back seat, and then there were two jump seats right. that folded down so you could sit and face each other. Yeah, boy, I would, I would love. Man, I wonder if you could find somebody must have some and, and fix them up and stuff, right? Uh, you know, I bet, I bet you if could. If anybody makes checkered cabs, look at this. This is the. I don't. I. I, I I don't know if I ever saw it. Did you ever see this? A Checo, checker, the Aero bus? <laughs> no. I think wow. I used to ride this in college. They they had one of these uh, going from uh, JFK to New Haven. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. It was a wow. long, like, checker cab. I never saw that. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, that must have been like $50 a mile with, yeah, on the kidding. meter. Okay, there's a red. But they were classically yellow, right? They were the yellow cabs. Yes, they were always yellow. And yeah. then and the new ones are going to, yeah, and today, and and the taxis of tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anybody, uh, uh, they used Continental engines. I don't even know what those are. Then they went to a, a Chevy straight six, 
uh, optional V8. So they were Chevy engines. I would and then they went to outboard motors, and I think that was where <laughs> Might have been the mistake. Wrong. Well, the propellers was... kept wounding pedestrians, you know. It wasn't yes. a good... Yes. Wasn't a good well, you idea. You know, you want to talk about weird. You know, it's interesting. I, I, I'm really excited to get your take on this because this was also at the New York Boat Show, and I and I was going to say Leo will pretty much buy anything. So yeah. now, I, whatever we, it is, I want it. Oh, okay, okay. Right. So at the New York International Car Show, yeah. which by the way runs for another complete week, so oh, it's it not ends too late. a week from Easter Sunday. It, okay, it just opened uh, yesterday and uh, after the two press days. So not often will you hear that they are showing at the auto show the street legal airplane. Okay, now this plane is called the Transition, and if you want to see it, their website is driventofly.com. I mean, this, this is, is a flying car? Yes, Leo, it is the most bizarre looking thing. Oh, they forget had it the checker cab, I want one of these. Oh, okay, all right, well, check, check that website. So it's a two-passenger plane that will fit into a regular garage. Oh, that's attractive. Now, you attractive. drive this. Yeah. It is, you drive it to the gas station, okay? You fill it up with regular gas. Yeah. You drive it to the airport. Yeah, you fold out the wings. Now you hit the little lever that unfolds the wings. <laughs> and now you take off. You can't just you... take... See, the airport's the thing I don't... You, can't you just take off anywhere? Do you have to go to no. an airport? Well, no, because... Can't I just drive down the highway, fold out the wings, and take off? You probably could, but... The traffic's bad. Can, I'm going to take off. That's the point of a flying car. Well, you know, the company says that uh, small private airports are highly underused, and it's really easy to find them. There are thousands of them. We got one on probably. our roof. Yeah, I bet you do. Yeah. I bet you do. Hard to drive to. Now, it. price, $279,000. Oh, that's not bad. It's less than the Audi I was looking at. Oh, okay, okay. And that now, even the have wings. Thing, it's just hideous. The, it's butt it, ugly. Yes, it really is. And you drive it around. You're not only is traffic going to be slow. You're going to be the reason traffic is <laughs> slow. What the hell is that? Everybody's going to go. What is that? Oh, oh. slow down! I want to get a picture. You of are this ugly. Guy. So, um, <sighs> seats. How See, many people? Two. It only seats two. Oh, okay. I can see me driving out of my garage with that. Uses regular gas. Looks like something out of a Woody Allen movie. Well, you know what? The guy said that they have a hundred deposits oh. on these. They're starting to build them soon. Can they clean the deposits off or are those part of the... Is that... Maybe it's <laughs> like they, they have bird, angry birds? I don't know. What... No, no, money deposit. Oh, oh, yeah, wow, yeah. that's good. Now, I, 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 you may or may not be thrilled to hear their proof of concept flight lasted eight minutes. That's an enough. Altitude. You know, I live yeah. close no, to work. I, I actually can yeah. walk to work, so that would be enough. I, I oh, yeah, that's good. You're right. Yeah. Now, now, the altitude is like 1,400 feet. Wait a minute. So you haven't that's all? It goes 1,400 feet? Well, well, the, the, the uh, test flight was 1,400 feet. And it lasted eight minutes. But the Wright brothers, it was like what twenty feet. And it lasted sure. nine seconds or sure. something, right? Yeah, yeah, but we but we did invent flight a few years ago, so I think you know they could try for more. <laughs> um, they expect them to be delivered starting in twenty thirteen next year. I presume they'll test them a little more before they deliver. Them. Uh one would hope. And you need uh, are they like street legal though? That's the question. Can yes, you, that's the thing. You could that drive that. Thing. That's street. When legal. I got the press release, it said, "See the street legal airplane," and I said, "Wait a minute, the street legal airplane?" Yes. Wow. You drive it to the gas station, fill it up, drive it to. You know, and the guy, the guy at the show said, well, look at this way. If you're driving to the airport and the weather turns bad and you can't fly, just drive to where you were going. Also, you don't have to go back to an airport to get your car. You can just keep going from new airport to new airport to new airport if you're on a day's outing because your car is with you all the time. So did they talk about range? I mean, obviously, it's going to be 
I mean, you know what? I, you know what? I, I I should have asked it. I didn't. It's I called mean, the transition, by the way. The transition pre- to presumably it's going to fly farther than eight minutes, right? I mean, it's, yeah. that wasn't. Oh, no, I, no, yeah. no. No. Uh, no. And the propeller. You know, I said to the guy, "Don't you drive through the streets chopping people up?" Well, the the, the it's the in the back. It's a butt propeller. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I, uh, <laughs> some older folks have those. And it just, <laughs> it just look at that. It's flying along. What's the uh, what's the top speed? Um, you know, I didn't ask that either. I was kind of so taken back. You just back can't believe that it even exists. It's not that much. Well, I mean, two hundred seventy nine thousand dollars is not that much. It's even you know it's it, even less in England. It's only one hundred seventy six thousand pounds in England. Oh, well then let's go to England yeah. and get one. Yeah, yeah. How much was the I, deposit? I don't know. It just looks strange. It's it's ugly. But, it's an ugly you, car you, to drive. Right? That's the problem. Yeah. yeah, but you would probably not buy one, or would you? Well, uh, first of all, I'd have to get a pilot's license, I presume. Yeah, it, it's called sports flight. It, it's, it's it's not, not like a com- regular. It's not like a flying a Cessna. It's uh, yeah, hmm. it's less than that. But yeah, it, I think the the fact is that it just looks awful. You know, yeah. when you tell a boat, it looks nice. Right. When you drive down the street, it just, it just looks like yeah. you've already been in a, a plane accident. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like what happened to your wings? Yeah. Are you okay? Can we fold those down because you're not going to, you're going to have oh to. Oh, my God. A long time well, that would that be true. And that's yeah. another thing is make sure you fold out the wings before you attempt to fly. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that's called the transition. And all the info is that driven to fly. That's <laughs> that's kind of interesting. I mean, I'm inter- I think that's neat. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So gadget number two would be a video. Yes. The video of the week, and uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. It starts out in the dark, and it looks like this. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Let me turn out the lights here. Okay. Now, uh, right. One if by land, two if by sea, or was it two if by sea and one if by land? You know, the British are coming. Uh, uh, three if by subway, <laughs> four by submarine, five by uh, helicopter. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll just put on one big, bright light. <laughs> Dick D. Bartolo, man's maddest writer, and the Gizwiz with this week's weekly daily Gizwiz video. Okay, this is the Coast Emergency Light. Let me just lower it a touch here. So at brightest, it's 375 lumens, and you can tone it down at full power you'll get about uh, 80 hours of runtime from four D batteries at this low uh, range. You'll get uh, 100 hours, I think it was 100, maybe it's more, uh, with four D batteries. But bring it over to here, ta da Now, bordello light. <laughs> and then, if the cops are coming, it's, emergency wow. it's flick, bordello it's light. Yeah. Okay. Is it red? It's an emergency light. Yes. Great for the car yeah. if you're stuck and you want to warn uh, cars away from you or attract attention on a boat. That's the red blinker. We're back to the red light here. And I'll keep it on low because I want to show you down here at the bottom. There's an indicator light. So if it's in the green, there is 60 to 100% of the power left in the 4D batteries. It'll light up yellow when it's between 60 and 30 percent, and then red light will come on to tell you you have 30 percent power or left uh, or less left in the 4D batteries. The 4D batteries don't come with the unit. Um, I just checked uh, on Amazon; it's selling for about $29. That's the box. It's the Coast Emergency Area Light. And it's great for tents, you know, or even if you're working under the hood of your car, there's a nice handle down here. And as I said, it's a really nice area for that. So, Dick T. Bartolo, Mads Mattis Rider, and the Gizwiz with this week's weekly daily Gizwiz video. Is it, Good night! Is it, is it really bright? <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. This is it. It's pretty. It's pretty decent. Three hundred seventy-five lumens is pretty good. Uh, it's weatherized. There's a gasket around the battery compartment. Um, 
I think it's pretty neat for camping and for emergencies. You couldn't see the red very well in the video, but I can click it over to red here. And, and we should say it's uh, 80 yeah, hours you know, uh, in the low power uh, use. Yeah, yes, uh, yes at lowest power it's 80 hours, and uh, the press release did not have it uh, at the highest. Um, and but a nice that, handle you on keep that top. in your trunk so you could change a tire in, you know, in the dark and that kind Absolutely, of thing. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's it. And as I said, $29 on Amazon. That's from Coast. I like it that it uses D-cells. A lot of those types of batteries use those giant flashlight batteries, you know, the big square flashlight Oh, batteries. yes, that are very hard to come by. Yeah, and heavy. Yeah. And heavy. Yeah. yeah. So this is... This is it is, LED? Uh, uh, it is. It's that's why you it's get such one battery big, life. Yes, it's yeah. one big uh, bright white LED with a rheostat because not most LEDs uh, don't have dimmable circuits in them. And then it, and then there are eight red LEDs that use they use for the blinking red and the solid red. Do so they, nine LEDs. Do they have. ever uh, at the uh, Mad Magazine? Do they yes. ever have? Um, Conference calls? Like, do you get together with all the other Mad Magaziners and have conference calls? I bet the business no. side. I bet the business side does that. We do. I bet they do. We do conference calls all the is time. Is there a way to do that? <laughs> yes, there is a way to do that. Vast Conference, our sponsor today. Vast, oh. We we uh, started trying Vast Conference. Uh, oh, I think we've been using it now for over a year, uh, and it's a great way to do audio only uh, conference calls. And it has some very, very nice features. For instance, um, they're using uh, very high-quality fiber optic switches. It's not VoIP, which most conference calls, you know, like the free conference calls are these days. And that can really deteriorate quality. I've never heard better quality. The other thing I really like is that Vast, you can press a button and all, and the conference calls recorded in each track individually, each caller individually. You can name each caller while you're in the conference call. So it makes it very easy to say, what did she say? And go back and just listen to her track, for instance. You wow. get, when you sign up for Vast, and it's free to sign up, you only pay for what you use. When you sign up for Vast, you get two numbers, a regular toll number and a toll-free number. The toll number calls... Uh, costs you only two and a half cents a minute. Uh, the 800 number calls six cents a minute. So here's how you could do this, for instance. Let's say you're having a, a conference call with a client. All the people who work for you, you give them the toll number to save money. And the client, you give him the toll-free number because, you, you know, you, he's, a, he's a potential client. You want to treat him right. And you only pay the high price for his call, the higher price. It's still six cents a minute is nothing. Uh, you can have up to 300 people in a conference call. Wow. The recording and the management features are fantastic. Uh, and we're giving you an exclusive. Two business calls free, up to 300 minutes, to give you a chance to try out the service. So you could make, say, uh, a couple of calls with five callers times 30 minutes each. That's 300 minutes. You, f you could do the math yourself. You see all the controls. This is very sophisticated. Maybe you've been using Google Voice or other things. This has a lot more capabilities you can request names. You can play a roll call. You can have a caller count. You can do things like turn off that new caller tone. Sometimes I don't like hearing that. Um, mute your own line. Ask the host to speak. Uh, just, just really fantastic. Very sophisticated account management, so you know exactly what's going on during those calls. The recording is fantastic. I just, I really, if you're thinking about doing a phone conference calling, and you're looking for a good solution. Highly recommended. Go to visit vastconference.com. Use the offer code Gizwiz, and you get the first two calls free. So 300 minutes free uh, when you sign up. You can uh, have, you know, send emails automatically, all the things that you'd expect. They even have a conference call transcription services so that you can uh, get a written transcription. The web interface, the live call manager is fantastic. Give it a try. Vastconference.com. The offer code is Gizwiz if you want to try it free for 300 minutes or two calls. Uh, now, nice. ladies and gentlemen, it's time for your third gadget, Mr. D. Yes, our third gadget is an automatic entry into the products with impossibly long names. <laughs> I love it. It is the Conair Travel Smart All in One Travel Plug Adapter with USB. Okay. All right. But actually, all right. But actually, this is a very clever device. Now, we've covered on the show two or three different devices for hotel rooms where you plug it in one outlet and then you can plug a lot of your devices into it. But 
if you're an international traveler, right. this is really nifty. This is from Conair, and it lets you plug in three plugs, and it'll take plugs from, I'm just looking at the list here, uh, Europe, Asia, Australia, Africa, North and South America. Built it's, in just, cer- it's just detector. one device that does all of that. Yes, and what's neat, Leo, is that if you are traveling locally, you can unplug the European adapters, which you won't need. And it's also neat, the adapters for the European market plug into the device itself so that, you know, normally when you buy these things, you're buying an entire kit. And this will be separate, and this will be separate, and they'll all come in a little bag. But this all goes into... It all in one. Yeah, actually, if you go to gizwiz.biz, I put it up already, only because it's new, and I don't think it's on their website yet. Um, so built-in surge protector. And wait, there's more. And wait. <laughs> A little USB charger on the side. Uh, not for the iPad, okay? It's not powerful enough for that. But certainly your smartphone, uh, the iPhone, and the iPod. Um, 30 bucks. There, there, there you go. That, that's I one. want this because I yeah. travel. I like the USB, which is really huge. Yeah. That's great. And, and it's got all plug, the plugs in there. All oh. the plugs and the fold-out plug in the back so that there's no sharp edges when you pack it. It is really nifty. Conair. But you said travel. it's not on their website. Is it on uh, anywhere I can buy it? or You know what? Yeah, uh, Amazon, one, one place had it. I mean, you know, I'm going to give you the model number, and I'll tell you why. When you when you type in this model number, I found all sorts of weird things that are close. Yes, I was gonna, yes yeah. I, exactly. Because the, the previous model, I'll tell you, the, the new model is, is this TS. It? Is this it? Is it? Yes, that's it, Leo. It says it, new. It, uh, the new CTS all in one yes. with USB. Right. TS two three eight. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, what it. I did is I pasted in the product number TS two three eight, and that oh, got me the search. That is it. And they're selling it for... 39 and 5 cents. You know what? It shows up in the... Uh, very funny. The Conair press release that came with this said retail twenty nine ninety nine. Oh, here's another. I found another one. twenty three seventy eight. That's there it, right? There you go. And this there one's Amazon go. Prime. So don't get it from Arizona Perfume. No, no. that would be a mistake. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And don't get the TS-237 because that's this device without the USB charger. Ooh. So you want the latest model, TS-238. Well, it was between this yeah. and the flying car, but I think I'll buy this. Uh, you know, you disappoint me sometimes. I always have to buy one thing. Yes, that's right. But I think I could have bought the flying car. It was in my. It was close. It was this close. But yeah, I think no, I'll buy this. If you're going to stand up on the desk, I would suggest you get the waiver for stupidity. <laughs> the stupidity waiver. The stupidity waiver. Yeah, yeah. The insurance company. Now, uh, Doctor Mom. By the way, this just in from Doctor Mom. She has posted some chickens for you. Oh, yes. Chickens. Oh, okay. I don't know. Do you know? Do you know something about this? No. she. I don't know. She says in the chat room, she says, there's Dick's chicken all cooked and waiting for him. Did she promise you oh, some chicken? Oh, you mean if we if we go out. If you, yeah. go, if you go to Long Island, she's got four. What state is four, Long Island in? I believe it's in New Jersey, isn't it? Or is it Connecticut? Yeah, I, th- I think it's Vermont. Yeah. Somewhere in New England. I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah. 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 West- I, I, I Googled it and it didn't show up. Western Long Island is considered part of the mid-Atlantic region. That's Southern Long Island is actually not owned by the United States. I don't think people know this. It's a part oh, of the part United of Nations. Yeah. Yeah. That's commonly yeah. not known. But those chickens yeah. look good, Dr. Mom. They, they look, do look yeah, good. Very crispy. They need pineapple and brown sugar, but outside of that, they look fine. <laughs> That's chicken upside down cake. That's another thing oh, entirely. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is my turn, right? So you got yes. you got to intro me. Yeah, this is going to be good. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I know when I say that, you start turning out, but don't. No. Because it can't be worse than some of the ones in the past. Or maybe it could be. But whatever it is, it's Leo's Turn the Table Turkey.
Oh, that's the wrong one. I got to get the one that's, yeah. uh, that got the yeah. turkey in. Dan Luda spent three months doing the, the <laughs> new one. That's the that's the uh, the uh, George Wood version. I wonder where I put. Oh, here is this it? Turn the t- there it is. This is the one. This is the Dan Luders one. Of the turkeys. <laughs> that's not a turkey, Dick, but that's okay. So I, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I like to. I'm a I'm Brooklyn boy. So what do I know? <laughs> what do I know I from turkeys? I thought it was a turkey. All right, I'm going to show you something. It's pretty. Okay. It's blue. And I want to. Oh, I it's wanna... the what the heck is a gadget? Yes. Wh- what is that that I'm holding in my hand? Do you have any idea what that is? Oh, it, oh, I. You know what? What. Is it the Nokia 900? It, wow, you're good. It is exactly. It's the brand new oh, I'm so Windows glad you're phone. doing it. Yeah. Well, they sent it to us uh, for review. I think AT&T sent it to us uh, for review. And okay. uh, I let Alex Gumpel review it. He's one of our uh, engineers. He's We call him the Flowmaster. Don't ask why. Uh, okay. But uh, no, actually, because he's uh, all about workflow. And uh, oh, okay. he I is a real, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> he helped us with that too. Um, whenever, whenever the waterless urinal gets backed up, we call the flow master. But, oh, okay. uh, <laughs> but uh, no, this is uh, he's a Windows. He's the only guy in here. We have a lot of Android phone users. I'm one of those. We have a lot of iPhone users. I'm one of those. But we only have one person who uses Windows Phone, and that's Alex. So I thought I'd oh, give him yeah. a shot at this one. Uh, and he flipped his lid. He said, this is easily the best Windows phone out there. I think when you first look at it, you go, oh, this is pretty. Nice rounded corners. This is plastic, polycarbonate, uh, cyan. They have black and white is coming. And uh, I'm told that they'll have other colors at some point. But right now, from AT&T, you can get the cyan, the kind of blue that I'm holding, and uh, a black and white down the road. Um, it has a beautiful... Uh, OLED screen. It is a gorgeous screen and a big one too. It's a really, really pretty, um, good black levels, um, very snappy. Now, some people are going to say, well, wait a minute, this is a single processor, 1.5 gigahertz processor, but you know, it's fast. And I think that dual processor, you know, really is only useful if you're multitasking. And since Windows Phone doesn't really support multitasking, uh, I, I just don't think it's necessary. It's more than fast enough. It's easily the fastest Windows phone out there and just beautiful. Now, it's a Windows phone size screen. It's not an HD screen. I don't think you're going to find any problems with that either. It really, it really looks uh, fantastic uh, when you play back video. It is an LTE phone on the AT&T network. So if you have AT&T's LTE available to you, um, you're, you're going to love the speed uh, on this thing. It's very, very fast. We don't have it here or I would... I would show you this. And I have to say, I like the Metro interface. You're kind of seeing it right here as I move uh, move through it. It's it's kind of a tiled interface, and motions kind of go up and down, left and right. Um, it, it's kind of something Microsoft did, I think, to really reinvent how smartphones work. Not to, as Android is kind of a copy um, uh, Apple, but to do something unique and different. And I think it, I think it actually, it, it, it really works. I think they've done a very... Uh, nice yeah. job. This also has a knockout price, right? Well, that's what's interesting because these top-of-the-line phones from Android and Apple tend to be 200 In fact, now the new Android phones are $300 uh, with a two-year contract. AT&T has decided to only charge $100 with a new contract. And you can actually go to Walgreens, uh, at least for a while anyway, and get it for $50. So it's very wow. affordable. Oh, the the yeah. unlocked version, I think, is 500 which is also less expensive uh, than, uh, uh, you know, the high-end smartphones. I think it's a, every bit as capable. There are 85,000 apps now on the um, marketplace for uh, for a Windows Phone. Pretty much all the apps you'd want, there's Angry Birds. Only one of the Angry Birds, but at least they have Angry Birds. Uh, they have Evernote, Facebook, Gas Buddy. Look at right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know you, I know you love Gas Buddy. That's available. Um, 
I'm told, in fact, Paul Therott has it, so I know it's true that the uh, Audible app will be out very soon for Windows Phone. So if you're an Audible user and you've been holding out because you really want that Audible app, don't worry, it'll be available. Really where it excels, there's a lot of great games, and I think that that's partly because um, it's such a beautiful uh, platform, but also because it supports the um, Xbox Live interface. So you can have your Xbox Live gamer tag on here, and when you're playing an Xbox Live game, Super Monkey Ball or Angry Birds or Halo Waypoint, uh, it will add those points to your Xbox. There's Alex's. It looks just like him. Then it's so cute. <laughs> yeah, there's little Alex. Yeah, he's just so cute. Watch out! so cute. He doesn't like it when I do that. Um, I think I have to say I think that the this is if you're looking for a Windows Phone or maybe you're looking for your first smartphone. I think that's really where this might be the sweet spot for people who haven't used an iPhone before. If you use an iPhone. Uh, as Walt Mossberg in the Wall Street Journal complained, you're going to say, eh, I don't get this. This is different from how it happens in the iPhone. But if you've never used a smartphone before, you don't have those preconceived notions. It really is beautiful, elegant, and easy to use. I think it's a very powerful phone. Alex, what was the battery life? Did you get good battery life on this? He said he'd get a day and a half. So that's you know one of the advantages of not trying to put a huge uh, processor in here, multitasking and all that, is you get... Yeah, you he has get, no friends. Well, he doesn't call anybody. He doesn't That's talk true. to anybody. He doesn't he really, know anybody. Now, one thing I really like, in fact, I'm going to do this right now. Uh, all Windows phones have a physical camera button, and uh, this is kind of fun. If you turn off the phone and, and you turn it on, you're, you're in locked mode, right? Um, if I turn off the phone, but instead of turning the on-off button, press the camera button, it goes directly to the camera app, and I can take a picture immediately even if the phone is locked. And I think that's a very yeah, nice feature. Nice. Let me take a picture of Alex right now so I can prove that he's actually in the room. And uh, and there you go. So let's go back here to that. Uh, how, what do I slide it? Which way do we? Uh, down. down. Slide it down. And uh, there you go. There's Alex Gumpel. That's his wow. phone. Yeah. Watch. I'll zoom in. Really attractive boy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. Make it small. I jiggled the phone. <laughs> I jiggled the phone a little bit. So how do I go back a couple pictures? See, this is a perfect example of, you know. If you're a Windows Phone user, you know exactly how to do this. If you're an iPhone user, you might go, I don't, how, what? Uh, go to start first. Because you open the camera. I have to go to start. Ah, I got it. So now, okay, I got it. So I have to go back. I can't look. At, I'm not allowed to look at the pictures because I never unlocked the phone. Um, so let's go to pictures here. I think it's actually uh, quite a good uh, camera. Um, we're, some debate over whether it's as good as the uh, iPhone camera. That's a pretty exceptional camera. Um, I think the colors are strong. Uh, I think the detail is excellent. It may not be quite as good as an iPhone 4S, but it's pretty his close. His choice of subjects is not overwhelming. Nah, I agree what? on that. He went to Dr. Mom's. Yeah, there's his Seder. Actually, there's his Seder. There's the ham bone and the, uh, and the uh, what do they call those, bitter herbs? Yeah, and the charosis. Uh, and an egg. You know, no one knows why. Just, it is. Because uh, of the festival. Because of the festival. It's, a fest it's the butter and eggs day. Pardon me? Oh, wait a minute. Now, his grandma makes the best. It wasn't your grandma's? Because uh, I have to say, there's his Seder. His grandmother uh, is just makes the most. Oh, wow. That looks good. Whoa. I want that. But it's, I, I had it last year. Uh, I, Alex's grandmother gave me some uh, of her matzo ball soup, and it was mind-boggling. It was fabulous. So it is not a ham bone. No, that's correct. It's a lamb bone. Um, the Zeiss, you know, they have Zeiss lenses. Camera position is a little weird. Uh, Alex also commented on that. If you're used to an iPhone or Android phone, usually the camera's in the corner. Here it's kind of a, a quarter of the way down in the middle. Um, I think that's actually You know, sensible. you may not put your finger over it. That exactly. Way. That's where the lenses are on point and shoots. I think that's actually yeah. a better place to do it. Yeah. So, so Leo has two cameras fore and aft? Uh, it has a front-facing camera that is a VGA okay. quality and the 8-megapixel uh, back-facing camera. I think this is a great phone. I don't hesitate recommending it. The feel in the hand is excellent. It's a nice screen. Uh, the colors are rich and vibrant. Um, very easy to use, I think, you know. And if you are a Windows user in particular, if you use Xbox, you'll love the Xbox Live. If you use Microsoft Office, that comes with it built in. Uh, I think you're going to plot to destroy IaaS. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder if I should read that document. Uh, <laughs> at least it didn't say Leo. 
Uh, I, I just, I really think this is um, a, a, a thumbs up a market a product. Alex, who's a Windows Phone user, says it's the best Windows Phone he's he's ever used. It's really excellent. Uh, so highly recommended. Great. Now I have to say I still prefer Android and iPhones uh, in general, um, but you certainly should consider it. Take a look at it. I think that uh, um, this is the first Windows Phone that really is a strong competitor to the top of the line phones uh, on both uh, of the other competing platforms. Uh, again, hundred dollars. That's a good deal. Fifty dollars if you go to Walmart. Uh, unlocked around five hundred dollars. That's the Nokia Lumia nine hundred. And my turn the table turkey for this week. Dick, uh, let's take a break. And when we come back, yes. I think the gadget warehouse and some letters await yes, us. Yes, yes, yes. Before we do that, though, can we talk about the Ford Motor Company? Did, was oh, Ford at the International Auto Show? Did you see anything from them? Oh yeah, you know they showed me the new. You had talked about it here. The the uh, the new My Ford Sync. How the screens now are are so easy to see the menus. How they clean up all the menus. They sent out anybody who had My Ford Touch. They sent out three hundred thousand USB keys and updated everybody. I know. And, and and I said to the guy, Oh, what if you have the old Sync? And he said, Oh no, it's all we sent them out on USB keys. We figured. Our audience knows exactly what we're talking about, how to update software. Well, you know, and it's one of the things I like about uh, 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 the Sync, and, and you're talking about my Ford Touch, which is kind of Sync Plus, is they all yes. have at least one USB port in the car. So you just, they sent USB keys, they gave you instructions, you just plug it into the USB port, you turn on your car, and there's an update firmware, and it just does it all. It's Really, the car is a yeah. computer. Uh, and that's what's so cool about Ford Sync. The whole idea of Ford Sync is... Um, you keep your hands on the wheel, your eyes on the road, but yet you're still connected to the outside world because they know everybody wants that. Some car manufacturers, really, they have setups so that you have to look down, you have to twiddle knobs, and that's just plain dangerous. With Ford Sync, it's all done with voice. You talk to the car, you tell it what you want, whether it's navigation, movie times, gas prices, by the way, built in. And, in fact, it's built in, I love this, in such a way that you can say, go to that station, and it will guide you there with turn-by-turn -turn directions. So if you say, I need gas, uh, find me the lowest price, it'll find you that, and then tell you how to get there. Uh, this, this is just really smart technology. So what they've done now, the next level up, is they've created an API, a programmer's interface, for the Ford Sync that lets you uh, actually um, uh, modify... I'm sorry, it lets you as a uh, as an app designer create an app that works. Let me go to the website and I'll show you that works with Ford Sync. So, um, you, you know, app developers are now starting to write apps that tie into the Ford Sync and let people uh, um, use things like Pandora or OpenBeak or um, they've got NPR. Uh, iHeartRadio has an app. This is called, they call it Sync App Link, and it lets you control smartphone apps with, here we'll go play the little video here. You can see this at Ford.com slash technology, with your Ford Sync. So you control these apps with your voice. Um, I'm a big Pandora fan. You know, to me, I'd rather have Pandora uh, than uh, a radio station in my car. Well, now you can. you got Pandora on your smartphone. Control it with Sync, thumbs up, thumbs down, play my station, next song, all of that. Uh, there's sync destinations to give you navigation and directions through the smartphone. And they've got a mobile developer network to help people who want to take their app and make it compatible with sync to help them do it. Uh, you'll find sync app link uh, on 2011 and 2012 Fiesta, on the 2012 Mustang, the Fusion, Expedition, Super Duty, and F-150 for this model year. It is just one of the many ways Ford is transforming uh, the auto world. Take a look at Sync and uh, AppLink at a Ford dealer near you. Drive one today. I think you'll love it. All right, Nikki D, uh, let me see. It's time, I think, for us to take a drive. Hop in that Ford Fiesta. Turn on the Pandora station. Let's turn on the Gizwiz Pandora station and, and drive over to a little place we like to know as... Uh, oh, it sounds like somebody's listening to music Pandora, there. Please say a command. PlayStation, Michael Zapruder Radio. Michael Zapruder Radio. How about that, huh? No, I was thinking more of something like this. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When 
gadgets pass away. Ha-ha! He takes them out to play Ho-ho! in his gadget Ho-ho! warehouse. There are no windows mm. and no doors. Hello, Nicky D. Well, how are you? I'm very well. It is time Good. for something old, something new, yes. something yes. borrowed, and something blue. I found this in the warehouse, and just even though it's all in Japanese, you shouldn't I eat old Japanese earthquake supplies. <laughs> no, it's sushi. Oh, you know, that stuff never goes bad. You know, that's the beauty of raw fish. It really is. It's been in there for six years. Mm-hmm. It was as fresh as the day it was canned. <laughs> what is that, really? <laughs> yeah. I found my old doomsday device. Do you remember what the doomsday I device do. was? I do. Wait a minute. It was. Go ahead. It was it okay. from Think Geek? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, Think Think Geek Gary. Originally, I think I saw it at CES, and and I said, "Can I get one for a, a demo thing?" And they said, "It'll take two months." We are so overwhelmed by the reception to this. It is merely a four port USB <laughs> hub with the most incredible design <laughs> ever. <laughs> okay. This is all right. So there, there oh, I is, want so one there, so badly. All right, so there's the hub. Now it's a little anticlimactic, but I'll do it for you. So and doing the uh, doomsday thing has nothing to do with the hub. You plug it in. The the computer it's says, just "Oh, a USB there's a hub." Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So you have to do the toggles in order. So you hit toggle switch number one. Then you do toggle switch number two. And for those not watching, I mean, this looks exactly like something that the Strategic Air Command would exactly, have in a bunker exactly. deep below a mountain. Yes, exactly. Then you get the key, and you put the key, and you got to have the key. key. Oh boy, you've armed that. I've armed it. Oh wait, how come my light didn't light up, Dick? It's probably the batteries are years old. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> this just kills me. I have to shut it off again. Oh. I have it so you got to do it just time. right. Oh, you know, yeah. you, you probably don't have the commander who has to have <laughs> the other key, and you have to insert it simultaneously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but that might be. I'm going to try one more All time. Right, one more okay. time. Okay. Toggle switch Toggle number switch one. one. Toggle switch number two. Are you watching, sir? Toggle switch number Toggle two. Switch yes. Number two. Okay. Turn the key. Turn Ready the on my key. mark. One, oh, two, three. Oh, turn. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Red. my goodness. You have armed the device. Now flip okay, up the plastic. Now, tur- open shield. the plastic shield with skull and crossbone. The doomsday device has been armed. Okay. Red activate lever on i'm pushing we're giving up don't all press hope. The, whatever you do don't it's press the, the red end, button no end. an amazing 8-bit simulation of an explosion <laughs> it is so anticlimactic and that's listening that's amplifying it through a, a high old pr 40 <laughs> it still sounds like that but the thing is it looks it's really so great. Nifty. It's so really. great. Now, I did a web search. It seems like you can't get it, it it's anymore. I think. In a lot of places, but yeah. everybody says, sorry, no longer in stock. Sorry, we don't know if this gadget will ever be in again, but it, it really was nostalgic. Too bad. <laughs> you know, it's funny with technology, six years ago is nostalgic, uh, but we were doing the Gizwiz, I think, when you first found You that. know what? I think. Yeah, six it years was ago a, it was, was probably one of the first it devices. It was an early I did. Gizwiz. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Wow. So that is the Doomsday USB hub. You know, we always said so, that. I already checked Think Geek. They have none, Nothing. not even in their no. closeouts. No, we said we always said that that if we did this show long enough, pretty soon, the the gadgets that we were all excited about would be. Gadget Warehouse Friday episodes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Someday, seven, five years from now, we'll say, remember the iPhone? <laughs> I remember that. Oh, I remember. We were all so excited. Was it was so only good. three was, and a half inches. Oh, it's just right. <laughs> and it was $99. We thought that was a bargain. And now I have this 15-inch phone, and it's just 39 cents. This thing didn't even have bio implants. That's how primitive it was. Yeah, I know. I, know. I mean, you actually had to key in words. That was ridiculous. <sighs> ridiculous. Yeah. 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 It didn't have thought email where you said, you know, I think I should. Oh, it sent it already. Right. You know, it yeah, would write the just, email for you. Yeah. Before, this thing. Before you. Yeah. This you thing. You actually had to know said, what you were going to say before you said it. Before you said it. It's just really yeah. shocking. Yeah. Oh. Hey, you know, what? This, this isn't a gadget, Leo, but I'm going to just send a quick link here. And let me just. Oh, do I, it. I always love it when we do these last minute. Yeah, no, no. I think uh, <laughs> what could go wrong? Wait, wait, hold on. Wrong. I'm just going to stuff this 
oh, okay, angry there. bird into I, my just, light. Just go to that link I just put in the chat room. Oh, okay. It's okay. a drop cam link, huh? Leo, right. I think... Is there something going you, on with you, your boat? No, you probably got this email Monday. I know you get tons, and, and Eva will probably send it to you. Oh, how come the U.S. is there not going on? There you all there. There you are. Wait a oh. minute. That's weird. That's uh, That's strange. So I'm seeing you there, and I'm seeing you here. I'm seeing you there. You're wearing a different <laughs> color shirt now. Yeah. Yeah, Leo, the, they sent an email on Monday that they had re The camera looks so much better. Yes, Leo. Is this and a new camera? Said, yes. A and you'll get the letter. I'm sure you get the letter, too. It said, after CES, we sent out cameras. They were horrible. We, we have been working on them, and the new cameras are way better. And we're sending you this email John, to tell you. John. <laughs> Look yes, get these. We got to get these. That looks so much better. Yeah. Well, oh you know what? You, you just, isn't that w pretty neat? And you, uh, they'll send you a new camera and a label to send your old camera back, and there's no charge. Oh, we got to do that because, you know, to be honest. They, uh, they looked like a little Vaseline was on They were there. horrible. Oh, oh, there's Myra. There's mm -hmm. my guest, Rob. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right there. So uh, they look like they've been, they're kind of in prison. Actually, <laughs> are, those, are they your prisoners? Yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah. Well, they. You know what? They. Uh, I lock the door and make them paint the apartment, and then they can go. Um. Wow, I can't so Myra believe. Myra just comes to eat. Myra comes in, and and uh, and Myra said to Dennis tonight, uh, could could you come up with a menu because sort of like every week I'm having the same stuff. This is so, now high def. Look how much better yeah. this is. Isn't this amazing? So we're gonna send our camera back. I you yeah, know, well, I, you, know, you know check your emails you probably got one because it said dear yeah. drop cam owner that's we us. know that you yeah yep yeah yeah wow we um, know you recently got a drop cam and we're going to replace it do you it. know you have a wookie in the corner i never even saw that before what is that purple thing it looks like a the oh. monster from monsters inc that is king kong yeah and gaines used to have gaines was an, an enormous king kong fan and one year for Christmas, Sergio Aragonis, the guy who does the Mad Marginals, made a uh, oh, about a seven foot high King Kong head, and mounted it in Bill's window behind the Venetian blinds, so that when you looked in, that the blinds were open, it you saw this big King Kong head peering. Myra's at you. doing gang signs behind your back. Yes, I just want to let you know. And anyway, messengers and people coming in were frightened by it. So the building department said to Bill, could you not put that in the window because... Yeah, it's scary. Going. Yeah. So I was at a toy show and they had this giant King Kong on display at this toy thing. And I said, you know, when the show's over, if you don't want that big display ape, if you want to send it to the publisher of Mad, he would love it. And the guy said, the publisher of Mad? What are you kidding? Give me the address. <laughs> so it stayed in Bill's office for years. And then when Mad closed... And we had to move in with Time Warner. I bought it home. Your this room now that I can see it, yes, <laughs> is mind-boggling. You should have <laughs> yeah. a special guest spot on Hoarders, because I really think <laughs> this is. Are, are you living in your storage locker? <laughs> no, I, this is a, too much stuff. Is, is that this, what you say? This is truly amazing. This is amazing. I mean, I could see now. In detail, I could see this stuff. I could practically re I, you know, I did. I, I love drop cam, and I love those folks. And I really wanted the drop cam HD to be good. And uh, I was so disappointed with the one. I did. I, I kind of held my tongue. Yeah, but yeah. we just didn't no, want to use because it because it was horrible. But yeah. this looks like an HD camera ought to look. I'm yeah. very this, pleased. Yeah. No, this is a giant step forward. Yeah, much much better. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah. And this is. So is this public, this Disneyland cam? Yes, it is. It is public. Dropcam.com. Well, you know, I, I just uh, I don't have it on 24-7 like you do. I just turn it on on Saturdays. Yeah. When uh, Well, I have to spy on my employees. You know, you oh, would, I know you do. You'd oh, be spying on Fairway. That's, that's, a, be. that's a, yeah. a given. Unless yeah, Myra yeah. stays there all the time. Does she yeah. live there now? <laughs> she lives there. Yeah. She lives yeah. here. <laughs> and, I mean, I think that thing, uh, putting that... <laughs> camera that's always on built into that nokia 900 so that, that alex clever? doesn't even yeah, know it's yeah, a great yeah, thing. Very, very clever yeah. yeah so this is nice so well well i'm gonna get to uh, drop cam we had wanted to uh and they had offered to give us drop 
I felt bad. At uh, at uh, CES, they said, well, um, I said, we love the drop cam. This is the old one. And I'd like to get 20 or 40, 30 and put them all over the studio. Would you mind hosting it? And then they sent us this HD, and I didn't I didn't follow up because I thought, this is, I, I can't do yes, this. Yes, no, it's a giant so step they, forward. So they realized something was wrong, and now yep. they've got it solved. That's great. Yeah, That's great. Did. Uh, very, very cool. Well, good. I will get. We'll we'll call Dropcam and uh, get a few more because I'd love to have them all over the place. That's really cool. Excellent. That's really cool. And they do audio too. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Am I hearing the audio? And, and they're only Wi-Fi now. The new models. Uh, well, the that... one on my the, the one on my boat is can be hardwired ah, or Wi-Fi. Okay, Wi-Fi only. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. You got to get a. Uh, a, a bitly for your drop cam. Do you have one? A short, a, a short URL for the drop cam. Oh no, I will get one. Well, I'll I make just one actually, for you. I'll just make okay. one. Watch this. Here we go. Oh, okay. First, no, the drop cam I installed this morning. It came last night. Oh, this is great. The Disneyland Studio drop Two. cam. Two. Yeah. So I go to bit.ly, and we'll just make this here right away, right now. Uh, we're going to put the URL in there. Okay. Actually, let me sign in before we do that so that uh, we, okay. can, we can, that way we can get analytics. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Analytics. All right. I'm going to shorten this link right here. E shorten and share. Mm -hmm. Oh, that bitly. I'm sorry. I, I was thinking of something else. Okay. <laughs> what other bitly is there? I don't know. It's something that was going to make my camera take an even more scope. I thought it was a camera related thing. So let's customize it. What should we call it? Uh, Giz Wiz Cam 2. How about that? That's good. All right. Let's customize it. Let's see if that works. Yeah. bit.ly slash Giz Wiz Cam 2. The number 2. All right? Okay. Let me try yeah. it just to make sure. Stick it, stick it in the chat room. bit.ly slash. Yep. It works. And I'll just stick that in the chat room. And that way, everybody who's listening at home doesn't have to memorize a really strange link. It's just bit.ly slash gizwizcam2, all one word. Dick. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. We I was going to say it's, say it's, it's over. I was hoping, yeah, yeah. but unfortunately, <laughs> you've dashed all my hopes, and uh, we got more. Sorry, sorry. And now, ladies and gentlemen, direct from the mailbag to your ear, a Gizwiz letter. Yes, and every once in a while we do something from the gadget warehouse that stirs people's memories and emailing ability. About six emails to tell me, this is the, the, the gist of them is all in this first one. Heard you talk about Lafayette radio headphones, brought back a lot of memories when I was in college. I used to order parts to build projects from Lafayette radio in New York and allied electronics in Chicago. I'd forgotten about them. Lafayette had an outlet store on Long island that sold scratch and dent items we drove up from richmond about 1967 to buy an fm stereo which was brand new it was cheap at the warehouse it had been smashed up in shipping no digital display a slide rule that had station frequencies printed on a wide piece of glass wow. across the front of the stereo, and you moved a pointer left and right with a large knife. Uh, a large knob. A knife stereo would be worked good. fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, knife. Yeah, a large the stereo knife. worked fine. Yeah. <laughs> the glass was smashed, so we never could tell what station we tuned in until I got a new piece of glass, cut it to fit, printed the radio frequencies on it, and used it for years until I got drafted for the Vietnam War. Um, the thing is, and then Ralph Burrell wrote, and he talked about the criterion line of Lafayette speakers that back then were uh, top of the line. He said the 2000 two and the 2002a sold for about 250 bucks and big kahuna summed it up and said dick 
Lafayette Radio had several retail locations. I went to them when I was in high school. Wikipedia has a detailed history of the chain. So I misspoke. Being a native New Yorker, I thought. You have no idea. You've never had, crossed the Hudson in your life. I never crossed the Hudson. Well, the Lafayette Warehouse was in Manhattan, and that's what counted. But evidently, Lafayette was everywhere, and evidently, our audience was very big in knowing what Lafayette oh, yeah. sold. They were basically like Radio Shack. In fact, they were. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's you know. exactly right. Yeah, yeah. And, and the, that one guy that mentioned Allied in Chicago, I totally forgot about them. Another big catalog, and I think... They made kits called Night Night Kit, K N I G H T. And what would that and do? That would you could build your own FM stereo speaker. Oh, you, neat. You built your own amplifiers. Oh, that's neat. They went out shortly after Lafayette did too. So. <laughs> oh, Leo. So open your email. Okay. This is the, see if you know about this product, and you may not, after your past experience, want to know about this product. H Z O. H- a way to waterproof electronics. Oh, quick! Like where's my phone. iPhone? <laughs> oh Lord, the exciting water block technology. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, what could yeah, possibly just, go wrong? No, what could, yeah, no. I thought yeah. maybe you want to do that with the Note. Yeah, I'll just take the Galaxy Note since I. Uh, who needs two phones? Yeah, and I'll just no, have I'm, that. I'm, you know. Oh, you already replaced your iPad, so once you <laughs> ruined the Note, you'll still have a phone. Now, I did replace I the I iPhone. That, I got that in the mail, and I said, I got to send this to Leo. Well, it, free, yeah, you, I so talked much. about this last week, the Liquipel incident, uh, where I uh, yeah. s- uh, they, they contacted me, and they said, would you like to Liquipel your iPhone? I sent it to them. And then, foolish me, I realized after I got it back, well, that means I have to dunk this thing in water. And I did, and it didn't. So uh, I, I have a new phone. I went to Apple, and they I bought a new phone, and they you know they were very nice. They only charged me two hundred dollars. But I notice we have a small victory because I yes, called Liquipel yeah. out, and I said, "You guys, you know, on the box it says waterproof. On the webpage it says waterproof. This is not waterproof. If I could dip it in a glass of water, and it short circuits the whole phone, and I have to buy a new one, that's not waterproof. So if you go now to their website, uh, they've replaced waterproof with water safe they've actually changed oh wow the copy did they send you two hundred dollars no they offered mm-hmm. they said we'll fix your phone but uh you know i mean that's part of the co- you know cost of reviewing stuff but see mm-hmm. what's happening right there no don't do that if you've been liquid. no no you're absolutely right it shouldn't say water safe and then show a picture of a phone 10 feet under the water right right it's it's yeah. it's a waterproof to me means you could put it in water they're yeah. saying no don't get it wet but uh, <laughs> Send us sixty dollars in your phone, but whatever you do, don't get it wet later. Oh, you see, I misunderstood. I thought you like sprayed it on with a can. You actually sent them your oh, phone. Oh yeah, it takes like a, a week. They have to process it. Holy cow! You get it back. It's completely the same. It's like nothing happened, and I guess not because <laughs> not only did it get wet, but that little strip, you know, the big strip that they uh, all phones have a little paper strip in there that turns yeah. color you when know it gets what, wet. Right now, Bright at Liquipel, somebody's saying. Murray, did you do a good job on Leo's phone? And he said, oh, no, the phone I mailed back without putting the liquid pill on? You could, I don't know if they did anything. Now, I have to say, it probably shouldn't say water safe. Maybe say say water sort of safe or, you know, might be water safe, something like that. That would be yeah, good. Water semi-resistant. I, I think the reason that they changed it is there is an actual legal definition to waterproof. I don't think there's actually a definition for water safe. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like marine electronics, when they say water resistant, uh, they, they say military specs, nine, you know, so right. you can find out exactly right. what it is. Water resistant is a lower standard than waterproof. Generally, waterproof means uh, you, you have made it impervious to water. In fact, oh, okay. if I do a Google search for a Liquipel under water, uh, for waterproof, Liquipel shows up in their old copy. It does, in fact, even on Google, still say Liquipel's patent had a waterproof coating. Is so mm-hmm. small, you'll need a microscope to detect it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. Well, you see, the, the, the coating is waterproof, but not, <laughs> not the phone. Right. Yeah. Not there, the see, so you got to read the small print, Leo. <sighs> I mean, was I give thinking? Them a break. And it was delivered by a uniform representative of the federal government. <laughs> the United States government. Well, there you go. Yeah. There's all the... That's yeah, all the proof, water or yeah. otherwise, I need. 
Yeah. Dick, we have run out of time, but... Uh, uh, oh, don't forget, the uh, you can now see the new Mad Magazine cover at the What the Heck Is It game. Yeah. Now, do you have something in this? Uh, in this here, what you do is uh, I do. To... I have ways that the post office can say, you know, the post office is uh, going broke. Yes. Maybe possibly stamps.com. But it's ways the post office can save money. For example, just with a couple of word changes, they can make their slogan, rain, sleet, and snow shell deter the couriers. <laughs> from the... That's save money. They don't have to... Yeah, they if it's have to raining, deliver... hey, we yeah, didn't promise. Yeah. Hundred days a year, they wouldn't have to deliver mail, and it's a lot. Well, reasons like that. That's in the uh, the new edition, which uh, the May June issue, which should be out soon from Mad Magazine. You can get your own copy of that by going to gizwiz.biz and uh, playing the What the Heck Is It game. Twelve autographed Mad Magazines for the yes. right answer, twenty four for the best cute silly answers, and the newly busty Lady Liberty Liquipel cover. They liquipelled <laughs> those boobs. I can tell you right now. You can still see the rivets. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Rivets of no return. Rivets of... <laughs> uh, it's a part of uh, the uh, cover story, The 50 Worst Things About America. Number four, our national obsession with cosmetic surgery. Thank you, Dick D. Bartolo. Thank you, everybody, Thank you, for joining Leo us. Laporte. Do you think this, uh, this issue will sell just because of those? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who doesn't like a giant pair of copper boobs? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, time to say goodbye, but uh, do join us. We do this show every Saturday afternoon right after the uh, Tech Guy, around about 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern, uh, which would be, because we have some uh, visitors visiting from Denmark, so I always like to give the UTC time. If that Does that help when I give times in UTC? It does. You make the conversion in your head? Oh, yeah, I think it's 3,700 UTC. 3,000 hours UTC, I believe. is yeah. the, No, no, let's, let's see. It's uh, 2.30 is actually 15.30, add 7, carry the 5. That would be 22.30 UTC. Wow. I don't know what that means. I think that means 11.30 at night is what it means. So if you're still up listening to this show, go to bed, kids. The <laughs> Easter Bunny is coming. Do you do the Easter Bunny in Denmark? No. Do you do anything like the, the Pascal Rabbit? He says they, they have these. I'm tra- I'll do simultaneous translation. We have the Easter Bunny, <laughs> but it's not like the American Easter Bunny. It's different how. Does it have big boobs? Nope. No. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> the Denmark <laughs> Easter Bunny. The Denmark Easter Bunny. Yeah. This is the Copenhagen Easter Bear. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Daily is with bye bye. I'll be here. A weekly daily gives a weekly gives.